So in this video, let us see the technique of a keystone flap in a Pac-Man type of closure for a proximal tibial defect. Now you can see the anterior, posterior and lateral views of this defect. And here we have a significantly large defect post debridement. We can see that the defect is at the junction of upper third, middle third. Gastrocnemus is not an option over here. We can have a medially based transposition flap, superior medially based or a superior laterally based. But we are planning a keystone flap. The advantage over here would be that we would most likely get away with linear closure without the need of a graft. So we are specifically planning this keystone flap from the lateral side and not from the medial side. Generally, we tend to plan it from the medial side. But in this particular case, since our incisions would transgress on the shin of the tibia more if we harvest the flap from the medial side. That is the reason why we are planning it from the lateral side. What we are seeing over there is the perforator which we have marked it beforehand. The PA which is written over here is the pedicular area. The lateral incisions which we have marked are more than the combined length of the vertical length of the defect. The transverse dimensions of the defect are measured and the transverse dimensions of the flap are I would say a bit more, maybe one and a half times more than that of the defect, depending upon the available laxity of the tissues. Now, what we are planning to do over here is we are planning to island the flap on that particular perforator or maybe two or three perforators if we find them to be of good caliber and size. And then as is done in a typical keystone flap, we are planning to advance that flap into the defect and close it in a Pac-Man type of manner. We are now elevating the flap from the medial side or no, it is, we have just islanded the flap. We are now incising the fascia over it. Now for, for those of you who are not aware of the Pac-Man, what Pac-Man is exactly, it was in the 80s that the Pac-Man video game was popularized in Japan and it is like a typical uh, the Pac-Man goes on eating the balls or whatever comes in the way. That was a very popular game in the 80s. So the closure is done in that particular manner. So the name is given as a Pac-Man type closure. It is also done typically for VY flaps for bed sores and at other places. Now here what we are seeing is we are incising the septum in the anterolateral aspect of the leg and what we are planning to do, what we are trying to do over here is identify the perforators in a suprafacial manner. So we are trying to identify the perforators here we have found one which is a tiny one on the superior aspect of it. Apart from that there are no obvious perforators. This, this seems to be a very tiny and flimsy perforator, but we will try to save it as far as possible unless we get a decent large sized perforator. We are reaching that area, the pedicular area. Here also we have got a very tiny small perforator along with a leash of vessels. So we will keep them as of now. The perforator which we have marked beforehand is probably the perforator of the Oh, lateral sural artery, there we have identified it entering through the gastroc. It appears to be a reasonably good perforator along with two vena committentes which are clearly visible. So, since because of the minimal handling, it has gone into spasm, but perforators of the MSAP and LSAP are significantly large perforators and are fairly reliable perforators. Along the side of the perforator, you can also see a leash of vessels. So this is this is our scissor magical scissors. If it if it is nearby a perforator, it doesn't tend to cut. Uh, what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to island the flap on that perforator so that we have comfortable advancement of the flap into the defect.
once we have carefully islanded we keep on testing the mobility of the flap and once we have achieved reasonable amount of mobility of the flap to cover the defect in a pacman type of manner then we can go ahead and close the defect here we have one large and two tiny perforators along with the leash of vessels there 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 are some tiny perforators over there and the one major perforator which we have is that of the l sap which is entering through the gastroc and this is our pacman type of a closure wherein we are comfortably able to cover our defect cover the exposed bone as you can see flap is islanded from the under surface you can probably appreciate the perforator dimensions are a bit more the lower most perforator is significantly strong and appears to be quite robust if we would have had some problems in the reach we could have probably mobilized the perforator a bit more through the intramuscular course but our flap is comfortably reaching the defect that is what i meant by a pacman type of closure two side flaps are brought together in the midline and you can see that the bone is comfortably covered the perforator is without any traction there you can identify the nerve which is intact in continuity we need to also mobilize some of the surrounding skin and this is on table closure with just a couple of sutures after completing the suture line we realized that there was a bit of tension on the perforator the flap was minimally congested so we removed these two sutures and we were hoping that we might need to graft it at a later date but somehow we didn't feel the need when the patient came for follow up as you can appreciate in the above two arrows there is healing by secondary intention and the entire length of the tibia exposed tibia is comfortably covered with this keystone flap in a pacman type of a closure so that was a pacman closure for a proximal tibial defect